वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला दिस यूनिट विच वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज ए पार्ट ऑफ द मॉड्यूल एडवांस सिंटैक्स द यूनिट इट सेल्फ हैज द टाइटल द थियोरी ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एंड बाइंडिंग ओके लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम प्रोफेसर जयशील आई I am a retired professor of the English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad, and I have been teaching syntax, I suppose, for nearly 30 or 40 years. Okay, and uh, those who have of you who are familiar with Chomsky and linguistics will know that after the transformational grammar revolution was. Uh, took place in the world of linguistics in the 90 late 1950s and the 1960s the biggest advance in syntax of the um, of generative grammar was the introduction of the theory of government and binding the theory this theory was unveiled by chomsky in a book titled lectures on government and binding which came out in 1981 although the ideas were earlier presented by him at a conference called the glo conference in pisa at in 1978 what does the th why or what does the theory of government and binding do why is it considered so important many people say that the government and binding theory often referred to informally by the short name gb was the real break with traditional grammar okay and what uh, if you ask Uh, someone what did it do it is difficult to say it in a brief way but i'll attempt to say it in one sentence what the government and binding theory did was to eliminate rules of grammar you know the traditional grammar had a number of uh, grammar rules for example the passive transformation the passive transformation moves the direct object of the sentence into the subject position and the subject itself is demoted into uh, the object of a by phrase a, a, a prepositional phrase or it's even omitted and those who did early transformational grammar will know how the passive transformation was formulated okay and there are the uh, rules like relativization which tells you how to form a relative clause for example the man whom you saw question formation for example the transformation which tells you how to form the question whom did you see the transformation of topicalization which tells you how to get a topicalized sentence like this picture i like from the underlying structure i like this picture you uh, move this picture the direct object to the beginning of the sentence and you get this picture i like which is topicalization comparative formation clefting etc etc there are any number of rules of grammar which traditional grammar talks about now the way these rules were stated formulated in uh, in uh, traditional grammar the rules had nothing in common each rule was different from the others there was no way in which you could generalize across them 
and very importantly the rules were language particular they are language particular means there is one rule which is stated for the English passive construction there is another rule which is uh, stated for the Hindi passive construction for the Japanese passive construction etc etc so each the rules for each language were formulated differently and there was no way in which we could generalize across them therefore we were uh, faced with a number of uh, uh, rules of grammar which were each different from the other within the uh, same language and each different from the corresponding rule in other languages now think of what this would mean for a child learning its mother tongue we are assuming that the child is uh, uh, trying to internalize the grammar of its mother tongue okay if each rule was different from the other a child learning its mother tongue would have to acquire each rule of grammar separately rule by rule this should take a long time because as we know linguists have taken years to formulate the rules of grammar the passive uh, 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 question formation relativization etc and therefore we would predict that each child would take a number of years to learn its mother tongue but this is just not true as we know children learn their first language easily and rapidly and with a with uniformity across children therefore this picture of grammar of what grammar consists of must be just cannot be right this uh, grammar must actually be exceedingly simple if only we understood it right there must be in other words there must be an extremely simple universal grammar which the child is born with in his attempt to to arrive at this uh, extremely simple universal grammar chomsky took certain steps but some of these steps were actually prepared for much earlier not uh, as late as 1981 when the book came out the the groundwork for for this uh, leap was prepared by a dissertation done at MIT by a person called by a linguist called John Robert Ross he wrote this dissertation in 1967 the title of the dissertation was constraints on variables in syntax and what john ross did was to study the so called long distance rules that is rules which move a phrase across a long distance for example question formation i can ask a very simple question what did you see what did you see where i move the word what from the object position of c to the beginning of the sentence the beginning of the sentence that we now call the comp position okay now in in this particular example uh, there is only one clause what did you see but the movement can be longer for example i can say what did you say that you saw then the movement is longer i can say what did you say that peter believes that you saw the movement is still longer what did you say that peter believes that john uh, claims that you saw then the movement is 
much longer. Theoretically, the movement of the WH phrase what can be infinitely long. Similarly, uh, look at the transformation called relativization. Take a simple case of relativization, the man whom I saw, where whom is moved from the object position of saw. But this, uh, the move, whom can be moved from much farther uh, uh, away. For example, I can say the man whom I, whom, whom I said that I saw, and it is a longer movement. I can say the man whom I said that Peter believes that I saw. It's a longer distance. The man whom I believe that Peter uh, 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 says that John claims that I saw. This is a longer distance. Again, the movement can be infinitely long. The same can be said about topicalization. The book that I read. The book that you say that I read. The book that you say that everyone believes that I read. You can go on lengthening the sentence such that the displaced phrase and the place it is displaced from is farther and farther apart. There are other long distance rules. There are about 10 long distance rules in English. Clefting, comparative formation, etc. etc. I won't go into all of them. Now what Robert Ross did in his dissertation was to study certain properties of these long distance rules. And he found that there were certain syntactic configurations from which from within which a phrase could not be moved out. These syntactic configurations, he called them islands. And these uh, constraints came to be called island constraints. Sometimes it is, sometimes they are also referred to as Ross constraints. The most well-known Ross constraint or island constraint is the complex NP constraint. A complex NP is an NP which contains a clause. For example, take a simple NP like a, a picture. If I have a relative clause inside it, a picture which you show to Mary, which you show to Mary is a relative clause which is inside the NP, a picture which you, which you show to Mary. I can have a simple noun phrase like the claim, but I can have another se a sentence inside it, the claim that John loves Mary. Okay, so there can be clauses embedded within NPs and that is a certain configuration and nothing can be moved from within the clause outside. For example, uh, I saw the picture which you showed to Mary is a good sentence. The, I saw the picture which you showed to Mary where the object is the picture which you showed to Mary and uh, that uh, NP, the picture, has a relative clause inside it which you showed to Mary. Now you try to move uh, anything out of that clause, say the picture which you showed to whom and try to move whom to the beginning of the sentence. Whom did you see, uh, the, uh, whom did you see the picture which you showed to? This is an abominably bad sentence and that is because you are extracting a phrase from within a, an island, the complex NP. Okay, Co uh, uh, another island is the WH island. A WH island goes like this. An embedded clause which has a WH phrase in its comp acts like an island. That is, for example, 
I, I can ask a question like, I asked her what she saw. What she saw is an embedded clause which is what in its comp position. And now, if I try to move something out of that configuration, for example, I suppose I start with the sentence, I asked her what, who saw. And I tried to move that. Who did you ask her what saw is a very bad sentence because you are moving a phrase from within an island, namely a WH island. Now, this, this, the, the Ross discovered in his thesis about 9 or 10 uh, syntactic configurations which disallowed extraction from within them. Which disallowed extraction from within them. There are, that means he discovered some 10 islands for extraction. Okay. Now, when uh, these islands were looked at, what was interesting was that these island constraints applied equally to all the long distance rules of the language. Now, that presented a theoretical problem. Because in traditional grammar, rules like question formation, relativization, topicalization, etc., these were formulated as separate different rules. So, if there are 10 long distance rules, you had 10 formulations. Now, if you want to say that, if express the fact that the iron constraints apply to all the 10 long distance rules, you have to state the iron constraints individually for each long distance rule. But this is obviously uneconomical. We are obviously missing a generalization. So, there was a theoretical problem presented by the work of John Robert Ross that remained unsolved for a number of years. And what Chomsky did in the book, uh, the, when he formulated GB was to, uh, was to uh, propose a solution. He said that all the long distance rules are actually one rule. They are all underlyingly the movement of a WH element. That is a like a WH element is like something like what or whom or where or why or etc. Okay, in English. For example, it, it, this is obvious in, in certain cases. For example, in the case of question formation, there is a WH phrase moved to the beginning of the clause. It is also obvious in the case of relativization, the man whom you saw, whom is moved. It is less obvious in certain cases, but it can be shown by uh, data from different languages that these are all, these all involve the movement of a WH element. And therefore, Chomsky said, these rules can be stated as one rule, namely move WH. Similarly, take the traditional grammar rules, passive and raising. The passive transformation, which moves the direct object to the subject position. Take the active sentence, John kissed Mary, Mary was kissed. That is a passive transformation. Uh, this, uh, there is another uh, rule, traditional gra grammar rule, the raising of the subject of an embedded clause to the subject position of the matrix clause. For example, it seems that John is nice. It seems that John is nice. The embedded clause subject is John. The John is nice. Okay. But if you have uh, that John is nice is a, is a finite clause, 
but if you have a non-finite clause there it seems John to be nice seems John to be nice John has to move to the matrix position subject position John seems to be nice so in both passive and raising you have the movement of an NP in the case of the passive the direct object is moved to subject position in the case of raising the uh, uh, the subject of the embedded clause is moved into the uh, uh, subject position of the matrix clause but both these Chomsky said are actually one rule and this can be formulated as move NP so all long distance rules were reduced to move WH and passive and raising were reduced to move NP now what Chomsky did was he collapsed these two rules namely move WH and move NP and formulated it in the extremely abstract form move alpha alpha here stands for any phrase and move alpha does not tell you where it should be moved from or where it should be moved to therefore move alpha simply tells you move anything from anywhere to anywhere move anything from anywhere to anywhere at this level of abstraction you can hardly call it a rule of grammar some uh, critic would say this is a license for chaos because if you move things around uh, uh, obeying uh, uh, move alpha then you are bound to generate a whole number of uh, a very large body of ungrammatical sentences so how do we uh, deal with this that is the the task of GB that is it formulates principles which control the over generation created by the rule move alpha that is any illicit, illicit illegitimate application of move alpha can be shown to violate a principle okay so but, but uh, keep in mind that now we are working with a theory in GB where there is only one transformational rule move alpha and all the rules of grammar have been eliminated what are the general principles of UG okay and what the garment and binding theory does is to propose a set of universal principles which apply to the output of move alpha so what we did in this unit was to introduce you to the government and binding theory or GB theory as many people call it we gave you the essentials of it the outline of it uh, and what the outline said was that Chomsky reduced the rules of traditional grammar to one rule namely move alpha and then proposed in GB general principles which the child is presumably born with knowledge of which will control the over generation that will be caused by move alpha